Hello everyone, my name is Silver Contrails, and today I'm doing a mod spotlight on the mod called Gendistry. Gendistry is a mod that adds on to forestry bees and allows you to manipulate those bees both in breeding and in mutating them in a very, very convenient way. And it takes a lot of the tedious, tedious grind nature that you get with forestry bees when you're using the other mods or the vanilla mod and it makes it a lot more accessible to users. There's no more waiting forever to get your bees the way you want them to. You can get them a lot earlier on, as long as you have the setup and the infrastructure to do that with. First of all, I want to point out that in the description, you can check out the link to their wiki, which is very well written. Uh, and I'm also going to put a timestamp in for each of the different blocks I talk about. So if you only want to see one of them, you can go ahead and click that and just see that one. But uh, I do recommend that you watch the whole thing if you're unfamiliar with this mod. So starting off, uh, Gendistry adds a couple of different items. If we look at it in any eye, we can see it adds a couple different blocks, a bunch of these gene samples, and it adds some upgrades and as well as some component pieces for crafting materials. The first block we're going to talk about is the industrial apiary. You know, this machine is basically an apiary uh, that you'd expect from forestry. If we right click on it, we can get into the UI here. And the industrial apiary looks sort of what you'd expect from one. Uh, the two top slots up here are in fact your inputs. These are where you're going to put your bees and then they're going to be output here uh, where your different drops from your bees like pollen and combs are going to end up. And in here, instead of putting in frames like you would with a normal apiary, you're going to put in upgrades. So let's try to do one of these things. It says we've got no queen. Uh, we need energy, which we have. Um, I'm powering it with a creative energy cell from thermal expansion. You can power all of these machines with thermal expansion, build craft, and industrial craft. So I'm just using you know, redstone flux, and it's coming in here being converted to Minecraft jewels. Uh, and it takes a bit of Minecraft jewels to run these processes. So keep that in mind if you don't have a lot of power. But anyways, if I put a princess in here, and a princess here, then they will, of course, run their process. Now it's going to go ahead and come across and it's going to consume the drone like you would in a normal apiary, but it's going to give me a warning and say that it's in a hostile environment. I'm currently in a desert, and Meadows Queens, they really don't like the desert. They don't want to breed in here. So we're going to need to make some changes to the apiary in order to make sure that this bee can breed. In the past, if you have a bee that couldn't breed like this, we'd either have to move it or we could maybe do some gene splicing and get it set up in a way where it wants to live in a hot and arid environment. Now we don't have to. So let's jump in here real quick. Uh, and here I have the industrial apiary and we can check this guy out. Uh, his recipe is requiring two pieces of glass, a bee receptacle, a sturdy casing, a piston, and two bronze gears. If you're familiar with forestry, uh, the bronze gears and the sturdy casing are pretty obvious. Uh, the sturdy casing requiring eight bronze, and then the uh, these guys right here, these are the bronze gears, which require you know wood gears starting off, and then stone gears, and finally bronze gears. And then we've got a normal piston, and then the B receptacle is a gendistry item, and it requires uh, five bronze, glass pane, two redstone, and a weighted pressure plate. Uh, this is gold, which is kind of interesting. Uh, that's actually a Minecraft item. So that's an apiary. It's not too difficult to make as long as you've got the bronze. Powering it might be more of an issue. What we're going to put in it are called upgrades. And to make an upgrade, you need an upgrade frame. Oh, wrong button. And the recipe for that is simply with four tin, two gold nuggets, two redstone. Pretty cheap but you need to use this to get to all of the other upgrades, which you can see up here. There are a lot of different upgrades. If we press U on here, we can see that we've got all these different ones in here. We've got Autonomation, Flowering, uh, Sieve, Open Sky, a bunch of different stuff. So the ones we want to mess with right now, and I'll show you how they work, is the Cooler Upgrade and the Humidifier Upgrade. The Cooler Upgrade reduces the temperature inside the apiary by 25% but it does increase the energy consumption of the apiary by 5%. If we put in both of these, well, excuse me, the humidifier update increases the humidity by 25%, and 
and it increases the energy consumption by 5%. So it's too arid and it's too hot. So we need to cool them down and we need to uh, increase the humidity. And to do this, we're simply going to put this guy here. And then it's going to tell us that the temperature is normal. So if I take it out, it's going to say hot. If I put it back in, it's going to say normal. So that's the temperature that it wants. And then the humidifier upgrade, check. That's going to get rid of the humidity issue that we had before. And if you can just maybe make out the bees coming off of this guy, the particles, it is now breeding. So he's going to do his thing, and this bar should load. It's a little buggy. It doesn't seem to work quite as well as it probably should. Uh, but it'll give you a progress bar at some point. Not sure when. Oh, it's going to require flowers now. So it couldn't find any flowers in the surrounding area. But we could give it a flowering upgrade. Although I'm not sure if that would necessarily actually give it the flowers that it needs. Which I don't think it will. No, it won't. Uh, but I'd have to plant flowers and then we'd be good. And that's a very, very simple thing to do. Um, and then it would, you know, kind of do its thing. In fact, we could go ahead and do that if we wanted. Uh, we could look up some flowers. Grab some flowers here real quickly. And then some dirt. Oh, we had dirt already there. And if I just planted these around... It would eventually, I imagine, flip over and then uh, start running again. And there it goes. Okay, working 5%. Cool. All right, so that's the industrial apiary. And this is going to require energy to run. It's going to require actually a bit more energy because I've got these upgrades in here. Uh, there's a bunch of different upgrades. The automation upgrade automatically will throw your queens that or your princesses that end up in here, and then it'll put them back in the top slot and also throw a drone back in. So that's pretty handy. Um, and then you've got open sky, which allows you to act like it's an open sky. So if it's raining, it'll, it'll still run. And then production upgrade increases the production of the bees by 20%, but it also increases the energy consumption of the apiary by the same amount. There's a limit of how many you can put on these. For instance, uh, with the automation, you can only put one in, and you'd only want one in. Uh, with production upgrade, you can only put in eight. Uh, presumably, if you put eight in, you would be drawing a lot of energy, but you'd also have very, very productive bees. So yeah, lots of cool stuff here. Uh, very, very handy. And let me time set day it. Okay. Next, we have the Mutatron, and these two blocks go hand in hand, so the Mutatron and the Mutagen Producer. This is how you'll mutate your bees. Since a lot of the bees in forestry you can't get to unless you mutate them, you of course need to use a machine that does that. Uh, the industrial apiary does not mutate bees on its own. It won't mutate them. You can't have frames, so how do you mutate them? Well, that's what you use this guy for, the Mutatron. If we look at the recipe for this, this guy's going to require a little bit more. He's a bit more expensive, requiring three bee receptacles, which we talked about before, that having the bronze, the glass, the redstone, another sturdy casing, which is more bronze, a power module, which is yet more bronze, actually quite a bit of bronze, uh, and some pistons and some gold. And we've got the genetics processor, which requires diamonds, and I believe... You can make it straight up in an assembly table if you want to, which might be the way to go, as well as a mutagen tank, which you can't actually place in the world, but you do need one. Okay, so what we'd do here is we'd put in uh, basically any princess and then a drone, and it will mutate them into a princess that those two combine into. But we also need, well, we need energy. We also need or mutagen, and then finally we need some genetics labware. Labware is pretty easy to make, although it does cost a diamond. Uh, you get 16 labware. You need one labware for every time you want to run this process. So we put, we'll put in labware up there. But before we do that, we need to get this Mutatron tank full, or at least partially filled. We need one bucket worth. To do that, we can create it in the Mutagen Producer. The Mutagen Producer takes certain items in the world and allows you to turn them into mutagen. The best being uranium-235 out of industrial craft. So if you've got that, go ahead and use it, because it's really good. On the other hand, I think the best one is the block of redstone. That gives you just under a bucket for every time you use it, and 
If you're anything like me, you've got a lot of redstone laying around your world. So if we put in two blocks of redstone, we'll see it takes a certain amount of MJs to run this process, and then it'll go ahead and turn that into the mutagen. And then we can pipe that out using some sort of fluid carrying conduit and then bring it over to the mutatron. It will fill it and then we'll be able to run the process. So another side note about all of these machines, they all interact with uh, basically how you would expect they would interact with an, as an inventory, being able to move items around. Uh, they can be, you know, the output of most of these things can be extracted from any side and further that they work really great with thermal expansions, item ducts, and fluid ducts. So there's the last mutagen going in here. We've got enough. We can run the process. So we throw them in there, and it's going to go ahead and mutate them. So it's going to combine the two and get us our mutated bee, which should be a common? Yes, a common queen. So the common queen needs to be run through another cycle before we can actually use it, and uh, it'll get us a common princess, a purebred common princess. So that's pretty handy, especially because with this, we skip the whole process of getting a mutated bee that's one side and, you know, you get a bee that's um, maybe common and meadows. In this case, you're going to get a pure common, which is great. Another option is the advanced mutatron. This one's a bit more expensive, as you might expect. It takes a regular mutatron and then a bunch more bronze, diamonds, those sorts of things. But this guy's kind of cool. When you put in some bees, it's going to give you the option of which one you want to make. It's going to tell you right away uh, which one you want. Now, when you run that process, there's a chance you could get another type of bee that's the cross between these two. In this case, it allows you to say, hey, I want the common bee, so if you hit, hit that, it'll do the process and get your bee. There are over there are 195 pages of recipes here. For different bee mutations so there is a lot you can do with this and it's very very handy so this as well this one takes you know the mutagen the mutagen works exactly the same way as you might expect and then of course it takes energy so the last two machines here these are another two that go hand in hand this is how you carry over your traits between bees the genetic sampler Basically what you'll do is you'll take any sort of bee, you put it here, and then you'll sample it, and you'll get a bee sample out. And if we see the recipe, it'll show us <laughs> 2,800 recipes for sampling. And you can do this with, I believe, butterflies and trees as well. So if you're breeding those, this is still going to be handy for you. In fact, all of this stuff is going to be handy for you, except for the apiary, I believe. I believe. Don't quote me on that. Uh, <laughs> what you want to do with a genetic sampler is, of course, we want to get a blank gene sample, some labware, as usual, put these guys in here, and then we can run the process. Now, it's going to take one of the random traits of bees, so as you might know, bees have different traits in them, and it's going to take one of those traits, and it's going to put that in our gene sample. So, that bee had a genetic trait of slowest for flowering, and now I have a gene sample for that. Uh, for recipes, let me just look at this real quick. Uh, we need a lot of a lot of bronze. Same basic stuff you've seen before in the other recipes. Just a lot of it. <laughs> uh, thankfully, you only need to make like one of these. And this, of course, takes energy, so we can pull that out. Now, for the next one, this is the genetic imprinter. Pretty snazzy. And this guy takes a genetic template. So for the genetic imprinter, we need, again, very simple. In fact, I think the only thing different between these recipes, let me look, yeah, is it's, I think it requires a genetic processor where the other one doesn't, uh, or no, it requires a, a, another bee receptacle instead of a diamond. And then you get the genetic imprinter. So what this does, we can look in here, we need a genetic template, once again, one labware, and then we take any princess, and we can basically put the trait on it that we have in the labware, and or excuse me, the genetic template. So this guy holds gene samples, or contains gene samples, and we add these gene samples by crafting it onto it. So if we pull these guys out, and we grab a crafting bench here, put the template in, which requires, and I'll bring this recipe up, 
uh, a diamond fortune for redstone. There is another recipe. Okay. Oh, cool. And it's got this too. Uh, genetic samples can be added to any template. Combine them in the crafting table. Multiple samples can be added at once. So this is a blank sample. There's nothing, or a blank template. But we can add this right here. This is uh, a, a genetic sample taken from a bee. And it's the species diamond. So there's a species sample for like every type of species that's out there. And I just got an achievement? Branch discovered. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so this will make a genetic template that gives a species diamond every time it's run uh, through this process. And then we're going to also apply fast. So I've given a bee, or I've given this template two traits, speed and species, and the speed is fastest, the species is diamond. And if I put this in here, in the genetic imprinter, it will imprint any bee with those traits. Those traits that it has on it already it will be overridden, and it will instead get these traits. So if I take a kind of a junky Rocky Princess, you'll probably get a bunch of these if you do a lot of quarrying. And I take... Oh, I need some labware. Let me grab those. And we run this. It's going to use up a lot of energy. And then it's going to run this process. And it's going to take that Rocky Bee, and it's going to apply these two traits to it immediately. And we'll see this when it comes out on the other side. It should be a Diamond Bee with the fastest trait. We can't check that it's got fastest right away, but we can check that it's Diamond. Diamond Princess. Very, very nice. All of this is really straightforward, I think. Uh, the process of really breeding bees in general can be somewhat tedious, very, very time consuming, and I guess uh, daunting to a lot of players because there's so much to it and there's a lot of interacting mods and you can't really be sure where one mod ends and the other one picks up. I think Gendistry does an amazing job of condensing all that. It essentially does almost what what mods like uh, Thermal Expansion have done in the past by centralizing a lot of the stuff that you saw branched out in different mods. Um, and and it's really nice. It, again, works with just about any power system. It works with a lot of the item transports, and they've got a really straightforward wiki. And, yeah, you can get all sorts of bees. You can get those bees producing things. And I think it's really balanced, too. It, the energy cost does require you to have something of a setup. And by the time you get those setups... Uh, available to you. And, you know, bees may not be the best option, but, you know, they, I mean, for certain materials, they probably will be. Uh, for instance, you know, getting glowstone or blaze rods, those are definitely good reasons to use bees. Uh, but yeah, I think that's about it for Gendistry. There's a lot of stuff in here that I didn't talk about. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, forestry or Excuse me. It all has to do with forestry. Uh, a lot of it has to do with trees. You see, see things like the industrial gra gafter. Uh, and a lot of samples in here for butterflies and for trees. You can definitely check that stuff out. It should be very easy to extrapolate what I've said here onto the, uh, the tree breeding as well, just from what I've talked about. Although I'm not sure how fleshed out that is. I'm not really an expert on tree breeding. Uh, but yeah, anyways, thank you for watching... I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, I will should have linked the wiki in the description, so you should be able to see that. And let me know what your comments are. Thank you for watching, and until next time, then.